This is Greg Likens, formerly host of the Finsiders, currently with 790 The Ticket in Miami, and you're listening to On the Finside. It ain't the left side or the right side, and it must be the Finside. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of On the Fin Side. This is Paul Pickens Jr. Today we've got high motor defensive tackle Rob Bain out of Illinois. Make sure you follow our show on YouTube, Spreaker, iTunes, and Stitcher, as well as on Facebook and Twitter. Rob, welcome to our show, and huge thanks for coming on. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing well. I uh, just appreciate you having me on, and uh, you know, I'm looking forward to it. So, Hey, we're, we're happy to have you here. I mean, a- anybody that throws up 41 reps on the bench at their pro day, yeah. is always welcome here man it's uh you know tell us a little bit about when, when that number popped up for you real quick before we dive too far into things well uh you know I've, I've always been a pretty uh pretty strong guy you know i've been working out uh since high school and uh it's kind of funny because you know i always even when i could barely hit 225 one time you know i'd always do it after a workout and uh it's kind of just something that stuck with me throughout the years and uh you know i'm happy with the number i put up i've actually done a more than 41 and uh just working out so you know i know i had more in me but it kind of is what it is and you know i'm happy with that number though i was just saying i don't i don't think anybody's gonna frown when they see a 41 out there for you so that that that's that's a fantastic number for those reps man congratulations appreciate that uh, and a- anybody that's got three older brothers growing up is definitely gonna have to have to be able to do something along those lines to survive from what i understand tell us a little yeah, bit about definitely about your uh your history and growing up and all that stuff let our fans know who you are yeah you know i definitely uh took some bruises growing up you know three older brothers just come from you know a real you know blue collar midwestern family right outside of chicago so i'm about 15 minutes outside of chicago just my family uh i'm the youngest my older brothers are 7 12 and 14 years older than me so you know there's a big difference so i was kind of just always you know thrown to the wolves i guess you could say yeah, sports is, you know, always big. All my brothers uh, played football. One of my brothers played football at Iowa back in the day. Uh, ended up having a career-ending injury. But, uh, so, you know, football, athletics, you know, just hard work, all that stuff's just kind of in my nature and, you know, the way I grew up. So, you know, I just kind of take pride in that and everything that I do. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a little bit about me. It's funny you use the word blue collar. I thought back and forth myself before this interview about whether to ask you about this, but you kind of do strike me as that blue collar, hardworking defensive lineman that that tends to, once they get to that NFL level, almost end up becoming like a folk hero for a lot of fans. Is, is that something you embrace? Is that just something that is what it is? What would that mean for you? I guess I, uh, it is what it is. Is kind of a good term. Not that I don't, you know, embrace it or anything, but you know, I'm not trying to be something. You know, it's not like I'm trying to model you know, myself into being this type of guy, you know, it's just kind of the way I am and the way I was raised. And, you know, I think there's more to me than, you know, just those cliches, but I think, you know, that's kind of a good way to, you know, wrap things up just in a quick manner, you know, just those kind of buzzwords, tough, hard work and high motor, you know, I think those are all good things to have, especially moving on to uh, the next level. So it's not something I'm trying to be, but I think it's a good way to describe just the way I approach things. So, you know, I'm hoping those things, you know, help carry me to the next level and, you know, you know, earn me an opportunity. You started your college career uh, over at offensive guard, I believe, and then made the switch to defensive line. What was that transition like for you, and how do you think playing offensive line at that level prepared you for that move to the defensive side of the ball? I mean, it was always something I wanted to do. You know, I always wanted to play a defensive tackle in high school, but my head coach, uh, had me play offensive guard and, you know, all, all along the offensive line in high school anyway. So and we didn't play both ways. So that's kind of all I uh, ever did. But my freshman year, uh, Coach Beckman, who was the coach at the time, just asked me if I wanted to give defensive tackle a try. And, uh, you know, I was all for it. So eventually, you know, once I moved over, you know, it, 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 there was definitely an acclimation period. But I think, you know, I started to uh, – pick things up around like my sophomore year and really take the next step and I think understanding uh with being a former O lineman and understanding just how offensive linemen work together and certain schemes and plays, you know, taking that to the defensive side of the ball, you can anticipate anticipate things uh better and you kinda of just have a better feel for the game, I would say. You mentioned Coach Beckman. I know ending your career you played under Lovey Smith. 
What did you take away from each of those guys? I know Lovey's obviously got a lot of NFL connections. He's a name that a lot of folks that listen to this will know as opposed to Coach Beckman. But what did you really take away from each, and how have they prepped you up for the step to the next level? I'll start with Coach Beckman, and, uh, you know, it kind of has a clouded history here. I don't know if anyone's familiar with everything that happened, but with, like, player mistreatment allegations. But I honestly, I liked him. And, uh, you know, I think he just – he was a just a big, high-energy, family, close-together type of guy. And I, I appreciate the way that he uh, gave me an opportunity. And just, uh, you know, I like the way he uh, approached things in terms of just always uh, – he really uh, was just a positive guy. You know, he was always on your side. But, uh, you know, I just appreciate everything that he did for, you know, me and some of the guys I came in with. But uh, going on to Coach Smith, what I learned probably the most from him was just he just has a, he treats all of his players just like men, you know, with a respect and he kind of just holds you accountable and he's not going to yell at you and he's not going to tear you down, but he's going to let you know what the standard is and what you have to hold yourself to every single day. And, you know, if he has a problem with you or the way you're doing things, he's going to let you know, but not in a demeaning way. And he kind of just, uh, you know, you know, he cares for you and you know, he wants you to do the best that you can, but uh, he's not ever going to, uh, tear you down but he's going to make sure you know he things are done the way he wants and you know the way you need to be doing things that kind of leads me to my next question because i know one of the the biggest ways we all have ways we can get better and we all have our strengths and weaknesses what do you consider to be your biggest strengths uh, on the field as well as the areas you probably need to work on the most biggest strengths i'll start a, a, a few things you know i think i'm pretty good in the run game you know just plugging up gaps and disrupting things and uh just uh knowing what's going on understanding the whole schemes of the defense what i'm supposed to be doing what the guy next to me is supposed to be doing try not to uh, take any plays off and uh just really know every play you know balls to the wall just giving you know the best effort that i can and things i need to work on uh one of my biggest things you know i want to work on my pass rush ability uh, i don't think i always got to show off what I could do just based on the scheme and the position I played here at Illinois. But I know I have a lot of room to grow in that area. And I also think that, you know, I can just get better with my hands, more active hands and uh, my footwork. You know, those things are, you know, I'm really trying to hone in on in this process. And uh, at the next level, I know those things are crucial. When you look at some of the players out there in the NFL, either now or in the past, who are some of the guys you try to emulate, whether it's in your technique, whether it's in your approach? Uh, one of the guys, you know, I really like and uh, still playing, you know, I think does a great job. And, you know, I think I kind of resembles uh, Kyle Williams for the Bills. So I think, you know, I bring some of the same things to the table. And, uh, I mean, he's an all-pro type of guy. So he's, you know, one of the very best. But, you know, I think I have uh, that type of ability, you know, if I keep putting in the work and just uh, the way he approaches the game. And, you know, I kind of view him as an all-around guy. As, you know, he's great at the point of attack, but he can also disrupt and really be a game-changing force. So. We're also, uh, you know, pretty similar sizes. So, Say you were to end up on the Dolphins. Most of our listeners are Dolphins fans. I know a few other folks out there do listen to our, to our show as well. But if you were to end up on the Dolphins, you'd be playing alongside guys like Indomitian Stu and Cameron Wake. What would you look to take away from guys like that? Yeah, I mean, those are, you know, the very best in the world you know, at, at this game. So the – what I would really try to take away is just, you know, how they approach each and every day, you know, living like a professional, understanding the game, all the things you have to do to get your mind right, you know, keep the body healthy, the way they work every single day. I guess, uh, you know, I really, I don't even know what to look for kind of at this point. I think, you know, once I get put in that situation, hopefully, you know, I could just try to model the way I do things, you know, after guys like that. And then, you know, hopefully pick up some of the things that they do and add it to my game. So what would you say are some of your goals at the next level? Short term, you know, I just want to get this opportunity, you know, be in a training camp and just really show that, you know, I'm capable of playing at this level. And then moving on, uh, you know, I want to show that I'm just not just just a guy out there. You know, I think I can, you know, really be a, a force and you know, hopefully have a long career, eventually make those pro bowls, those all pros, you know. I think if anyone walks uh comes into the NFL and doesn't have high aspirations like that, you know, it's they're misguided. So, you know, I just really wanna first get the opportunity and then, you know, just build from there every single day. Speaking of the opportunity, and I'm gonna tailor this question 
to the Dolphins just because it is what it is. But Chris Greer, Dolphins general manager, say he's sitting in the war room on draft day. He's got four names in front of him, thinking about drafting them with his next pick. One of those names is your name. If you had the opportunity to say something to Chris to convince him that you are the guy to go with out of the names on that list, what would you say? I'd just say, um, you know, I kind of hate it. It, it. It's cliche, but I guess it's cliche for a reason. You know, I'm going to go in the training camp. I have nothing to lose. And, you know, I think those are the most dangerous type of guys. You know, I don't have any personal agenda or some high ego that I'm trying to maintain. You know, I'm just going to go in there. I'm going to buy into the system. I think I can be a great teammate, understand my role. And just uh, every day, you don't got to worry about me getting into trouble. I have no history. You don't have to worry about me messing things up. You know, uh, I don't really have an injury history. I'm just a guy willing to work, you know, and willing to be molded. And, you know, I just, uh, at the next level, I'm just ready to take that step and just get under the guidance of some of the gurus of the game and just, you know, just continue honing my craft. And it's kind of an obsession for me, you know, just wanting to be the best at every single thing I do. With this whole process, I know teams put out feelers to everybody, and I know sometimes they're okay with you disclosing, sometimes they're not, and they usually let you know. Can you tell us any of the teams that have expressed an interest in you thus far? I mean, I've, I've had a, interviews with a few teams, and I haven't talked to the Dolphins at all. I mean, so but i got to work out with the Bears and the Colts next week and um, just some other teams. You know, I've, I've expressed interest in terms of just talking uh, to me, interviews, sitting down, asking about me, what my goals are, and, you know, things of that nature. I don't really want to disclose any uh, names just because, you know, I, don't, I haven't talked with my agent or anything about that so you know i don't really know if that's best or not totally fair those can be all kinds of varying levels of answers totally understandable this is a process that it's meant to benefit you so whatever you're able to share is great and whatever you can't we're okay with that too now i am going to ask you an an oddball question here i know every, every year we hear about odd questions that players have been asked throughout the whole process Without naming any names, has there, has there been any question that an NFL representative or a team representative has asked you during this process that was just completely off the wall and, and, and really struck you odd? No, I can't. I can't really say that. You know, I uh, like I, I wasn't at the combine or anything, so I'm sure you know I might have got some questions there. But from the interviews I've had and the questions, you know, they've kind of just been you know my history and what I'm all about. So I'd love to give you one, but you know, I really haven't gotten any of those out of this world questions. It's one of those curiosity factors because those can always be intriguing at times when they do pop up. I'm sure you've seen a few of them out there in the past. What advice would you give to, say, kids out there playing football today that really want to follow in in the footsteps of of what you're doing? What advice would you give them to be able to not only get to the college ranks but to be able to get to the pros? The the first thing I'd say is honestly just, just have fun with it. I mean, it's easy in the whole recruiting process in the college it's high pressure high stress situations it's easy to get lost and lost in the process and kind of lose yourself at some points in times you know if you let let all the little things eat you up so i'd say you know just remember at the end of the day you know it's it's the same game same game you're playing since you were a little kid i mean it doesn't change just have fun with it always remember why you're doing it in the first place and uh just be different, you know, work hard, do the little things. A lot of times, you know, at the college level, I see guys come in and they may be talented or they just, you know, they don't, they don't pay attention to the details and, you know, it might not come, it might not come back and bite you immediately, but, you know, eventually you're going to get to the point where, you know, it, it's going to haunt you. So just do the little things, you know, do things right. There's a, a nobility in that. And, uh, you know, it's not always hard. So, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's not always easy. You know, it's hard to do things day in, day out the right way and have fun with it. But uh, it's kind of a balance, you know, I think that you need to have. And, you know, that's what makes this game, you know, some of the players in it so great. While we're talking about this, I know your agency is big on this. I know most NFL teams now are getting bigger and bigger on this every year. What can fans expect to see from you out in the community once you reach the NFL? You know, I have a... I definitely would love to give back, you know, to especially just, you know, young kids in the community, I guess, in the form of athletics, you know, just giving them opportunities. In the at Illinois here, you know, I've participated in a few things from, we had a Lift for Life, you know, organization. I actually did a reps for rare diseases for uplifting athletes. 
So I think I, it was like 20 or 30, 35 bucks for every rep I did at the pro day on 225. You know, I raised the money for uh, rare diseases research and uh, just things of that nature. You know, I've worked uh, at a diabetes camp for uh, kids with uh, type 1 diabetes here in Illinois. And just, you know, I think there's always, it's always cool to give back, you know, to the community because no one does this by themselves. So anytime you have the chance to give back, you know, I think it's, it's almost a responsibility. That is an awesome answer. And, and while we're on the subject of that, I'm going to give you a soapbox here for a minute. If you've got anything currently going on or plan to be going on, feel free to let our listeners know, even if it's just letting them know where to follow you out there, whether it's letting them know about something else like that that you have coming up, the floor is yours. Yeah, I mean, right now, you know, I'm just uh, really just fully committed to this process until the draft and everything after that. So, you know, everything I'm doing right now, it's kind of just full steam ahead, you know, focused on that. But if anyone uh, wants to follow me, my Twitter, I think, is uh, at Rob Bain, B-A-I-N underscore. And then my Instagram is Rob.C.Bain. So nothing crazy, pretty basic names. But, yeah, if anyone wants to follow, you know, I'm a pretty good tweeter every now and then. You know, I have some, some good ones, so. Fair enough. I got two more questions for you here, Rob. I know draft day has gotten more and more extended over the past few years. Now it's a three-day process in the evenings, et cetera. What are your plans during the draft? Are you going to kind of go hole up somewhere by yourself? Are you going to be with your family, out with friends? What do you got going on? Yeah, no, I'll just probably be with my family. Uh, you know, Most of my, for my mom and my uh, brother, his wife and kids, um, all in the Chicago area. So, you know, we'll probably get together and do something, but, you know, nothing, nothing crazy, you know, just kind of hang out and uh, kind of just enjoy the time. You know, hopefully an opportunity comes my way, but in terms of what I'll be doing, uh, just pretty basic, kind of just, you know, just enjoying time with family and friends. All right. Well, last question for you here, Rob, before we let you go. Uh, this is one that no one gets away without answering, just so you know. We've had everyone from Dolphin CEO Tom Garfinkel on to Dolphins legends to current players, former players, draft prospects, agents, you name it. Everybody's got to answer this for us at least once. You roll up to a red light. you got your windows down in your car, and you've got your music player with every song in it on shuffle, just listening to whatever comes up. You're jamming out to one song, and that song ends when you get up to that red light. What's the one song that you hope to God your shuffle does not discover on your iPod and play blaring over those speakers for everybody standing around outside to hear? I'm kind of I'm, I'm I'm a big Taylor Swift guy, so uh, Ooh, our right. story, our song, you know, all our old songs. Uh, you know, you can definitely catch me listening to, and sometimes you know I'll just be listening to it on my phone when I think I'm by myself, and you know someone walks around the corner, and I got to try to change it real quick or turn it off, but. Yeah, I'm a big I'm a big T Swift guy. Oh, you you went there with the T Swift guy. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's a it's, it's a little embarrassing, but you know, there's no shame. No, nah, nothing wrong with that. Music. I was. Oh yeah, it's I I will say I've listened to a song or two myself, so I can't say too too much here. But hey, yeah. Rob, huge thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Best of luck in this draft process, man. I hope you you go even earlier than expected and end up somewhere where you get to be productive. We're, we're all pulling for you here. And uh, for our listeners out there, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you follow Rob out on social media. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, Spreaker, iTunes, and Stitcher. On behalf of myself, on behalf of Brian Catanzaro, if it's not on the right side, it is not on the left side. It is on the fin side. Solo D, take us home. It ain't the left side or the right side. And it must be the fin side. Listen, Dolphins fans across the land all tuning in to see what Brian Cat and Paul about to do again. We rep our team, you can't change, stop or ruin it.